very good morning to all the ladies and gentlemen. We are here to present our research topic on uh, preliminary analysis of impact of foreign labor participation on the construction industry in Sri Lanka. And this is our content. Uh, starting with the background, we identify our key objectives and the methodology, findings, we analyze uh, the data we collected and we concluded with recommendations. Starting off with the background, Sri Lanka today is witnessing a massive boom in the real estate and construction industry. Of course, with this, a higher demand is observable for the construction labor for both skilled and unskilled. But at the same time, we find a labor shortage or a serious labor crisis in arising from the last few years and uh, since this labor supply is not enough as per the demand. Um, therefore, the domestic contractors are very desperate for the workers whereby they tend to employ foreign labor to meet this demand. Uh, it is again why most of the mega infrastructure projects in the country over the past few years are, uh, have been undertaken by the foreign consultants and the contractors. And this is facilitated by the BOI Board of Investment Projects, which are entitled to Im uh, import construction items or materials for their projects. Uh, according to official statistics information, 2016, the BOI received a request for more than 8,000 work visas, and 5,786 visas were approved. But in a recent article, we also found that uh, about 100,000 are employed in the site, uh, based on uh, which were not included as requested by the BOI. And these statistics reveal the significance of this research as a contemporary essential, which is why we selected this topic as a research area. And uh, the way our, we conducted our research is based on the analytical researching and based on the qualitative analysis. We collected data through literature reviews uh, by research articles, books, journals, and other uh, web-based media. Uh, again, uh, the primary data we collected through the professionals in the construction organizations and through vocational training institutions. And here's the planned interviews. We consulted uh, main, uh, 20 of the main contractors and five of the labor suppliers, uh, and we made uh, five vocational and all together uh, the plan view is like this. So this is the survey and the survey is the hard core of this research. We point out only the main features uh, that we found here through the research and it was uh, it was in our mind for a long time and we used to have interviews and collect data uh, actually before two years ago, so I think it's immensely support for the research. Now, when considering the survey concept, basically our area was focused on three main uh, areas, uh, especially main contractors, labor suppliers, and vocational training institutions were focused for this research. Uh, additionally, uh, some leading construction like MAGA, Sunken, ICC are used use them uh, for the construction, uh, for, for the research, because they have more on details uh, regarding labors. The main, main contractors were in the, uh, in the range of categorization from C1 to C7, and uh, vocational training institutions, labor suppliers were in high rank levels. So in finally, we, did, we found that uh, we have 83.33 uh, of act actual work we have done for this research and especially I should have mentioned that when considering labors in the construction industry there are both in-house and mobile labors so the contractors and vocational training institutions have different organization structures for those contents for those ratios so we have also examined this to our research and when moving to the next slide this is the view of uh, the actual interviews that we have done and what we have planned. The overall picture of our collected data seems as this. 
So you can see that we have collected data from contractors, labor suppliers, and training institutions. And uh, all are uh, approximately, we have collected like 30 of, uh, organizations for this process. Now, this is the comparative prospect of uh, education level in Sri Lanka because in the theme of our research, we have considered all level labors and uh, A-level eligible students uh, who work in the labor force. So generally about 340,000 students enrolled for grade 1 per year, you can see through the graph. And during the year of 2014 to 2015, the number of candidates who sat for O-level has been rapidly increased. At the same time, the number of students who qualified for A-levels are increased. So. When students sit for the O-level examinations like that, and when they qualify for A-levels like this, so where do others go? That's our question. Yes, the gap, with, gap between those two variables shows uh, the amount of the other employ, employments which are going to the uh, burial type of sectors after the O-levels. So, uh, we found that they occupy, most of them are occupied in military, uh, small owned businesses and some other areas such as labor in construction industry. So we have paid uh, attention on the analysis of this research and it seems like this. The sample used for this research was based on the construction companies, training institutions and labor suppliers as we talked about and uh, especially we focused Colombo, Kurunagala and Kandy because in those days uh, we have more construction processes in, the, in those districts. So the research always based on tool of quantitative methodology. Basically, the questionnaires were used to identify main, main, main areas of, um, of the research and the answers was found in detail. The method of conducting this research was based on a qualitative data analysis system. Therefore, I found both common and rare views to this research. While conducting the research, the questionnaires were passed through both in-house and mobile labors. Uh, therefore, in the presence of domestic subcontractors, this research hopes to identify the impact of subcontractors' labors in future. As a conclusion, there is a scarcity uh, labor in the market. We can see that the labor, education level is left right percentage uh, for the labor, uh, labor requirement and the quality of the local labor to be improved. Again, vocational training institute do not identify this uh, because this training was mainly focused on the quality of the market and the, our literature uh, is more high so therefore uh, more Candidates want to get the higher salary, so therefore they are going for foreign uh, employment. With this uh, situation, the conclusion is that if the current trend is continue like this, so the 75% uh, foreign employment will be will nearly uh, to increase if you are not doing any like a solution for this. One. The government policies need to be strengthened in order to avoid the illegal foreign employment in the domestic industries. With this uh, conclusion, so we are going to do the recommendation. Uh, according to the, uh, our uh, institutes and the market behavior, so most of uh, laborers are doesn't like to ignore him as a, uh, their job because they are calling as a laborer. So, First of all, we would recommend that we need to change their mind, introducing some other uh, application. So, in insist of the labor, we can say something like uh, we can call them something like as the NV2 technician level one. So, because uh, it is affecting to the uh, specifically for the they are marriage at this stage. Because if it is a labor, nobody wants to marriage. So, because of that, there is a discourage. So. We found that in the, uh, in the uh, survey, so we need to change their mind. 
we use the same thing. Secondly, establish uh, the special professional training institutes, island wide. Uh, uh, we need to more encourage the uh, school leavers because according to the uh, statistics, we found that uh, So that between uh, all levels uh, sit for the exams and the eligible for the A levels, uh, there is a hundred, nearly 100,000. So you can see in the red line and the green, green one. So gap is the somewhere around 100,000. So these are leaving. They are not continuing the education. So most probably we can catch those for the other construction requirements. But the problem is we are not providing necessary uh, training for them. That is why, so we want to accept and you to emphasize that for the training institutes to get some more uh, policies. And thirdly, we propose to introduce uh, construction foreign employment studies for our uh, uh, programs. So then we can understand the risk of the foreign employment as well as uh, we can give the solution to our local needs. So thank you very much.